seeing no further introductions, it's now time for member statements. The member from Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you, uh, Speaker. I rise today to highlight the work of the Hearth Place Cancer Centre situated in Oshawa. Hearth Place was the inspiration of Carolyn Alexander, who was diagnosed with terminal cancer and wanted to create a centre that would address the emotional and mental health needs of families. Established in 1997 as a drop-in centre in the comfort of a home-like atmosphere, Hearth Place Cancer Support Centre situated in Oshawa is committed to providing community support for people diagnosed with cancer and their families. Through individual and group support, a resource centre, wellness programs and an ongoing lecture and discussion services. Speaker, Hearth Place is a support centre where cancer patients and their families can come and share their experiences, find resources and discover new ways to care for themselves and each other. Hearth Place also offers Speaker pediatric cancer family support with programs for children and teens with cancer, their siblings, a monthly family support group, fun days, and couple support. Speaker, this Saturday, I and many other Durham residents will gather in Ajax at a major fundraiser to support the work of the center. Because for 20 years, Hearth Place has provided a vital and caring service in an area where it's much needed. I'd like to take this opportunity, Speaker, to thank all the staff and volunteers for the work that they've done in supporting families in need in the region of Durham. Well, thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Timmins, James Bay. I thought he was going to make a statement about Ontario Shores and talk about my daughter, but that's a whole other story. I, Mr. Speaker, I rise on an issue that all of us in this assembly have had issues with, and that is the difficulty that service groups are having to be able to raise dollars. If you own a hall, you're the Italian club, the French club, uh, you know, the Legion, whatever it might be, it's getting more difficult as time goes on to be able to keep the doors open. We have changed the rules in this province so that fundraising done by those clubs has to go to charity, it can't go to the maintenance of the hall. And the difficulty is like the chicken and the egg syndrome. You have, hall, you have groups, for example, like the Legion, who have a building that they have to maintain, but they need money to be able to keep the doors open. If they keep the doors open, the club survives and supports the community. But when you're not able to raise money in order to pay for your building, buy tables, fix windows, change a furnace, fix the roof, you're really accessibility. It's a real problem. And as a result, we're seeing community groups and organizations shut down across this province. We have seen in the city of Timmins the Moose Hall go down. We've seen the Odd Fellows Hall go down. We've seen the Timmins Legion go down all of which is indicative of the problem that we have. So I call on this assembly in order to do something that we revisit the rules in order to give community service clubs the ability to be able to fundraise in a way that allows them to maintain their buildings and that they're not always put under the position of having to shut down because they don't have the money to invest in their buildings. Thank you. We understand this, the member from Ottawa South. Today is a, is a very, very special day. Today is my mom's birthday. Yeah. Mer Mary, Mer Mer yeah, yes, uh, yeah, well, uh, my long suffering mother. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. We all know that. So, um, my mom, Mary Fraser, Mary Joan Costi from Hamilton, so a proud Hamiltonian. Uh, it's her birthday today. Um, I just want to thank her for. You know, as a VON, she taught the prenatal course while she was pregnant with me, and she had the most difficult birth. She, um, she's such a great mom to all of us. I thank her for 13 years of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in my lunch. Actually, 14 years, if you count kindergarten. Uh, elevated lady cookies, oatmeal cookies, for being a nurse to the whole family, and, um, and just being a loving mom. And uh, we all have moms. We're all lucky we have them, but mom, I got the best mom. I just wanted you to know that. I wanted to enhance her. And on, on behalf of uh, Missy and Stephanie and Kara and I, we love you. Happy birthday. And I hope I get home early enough to see you tonight. Thank you. Very, 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 very special day today. The member from Perry South Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in the House today to recognize an incredible opportunity that students in my riding get to experience this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Forty students from Perry Sound High School and 17 from Bracebridge's St. Dominic Catholic Secondary School have traveled to Europe. 
On Sunday, they will recognize and commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Vimy Ridge. To me, this is an invaluable experience for these young people. While in school, children learn of the ultimate sacrifice that many young people who were not much older than these students had made in order to fight and defend our country. Sadly, as Canadians lose our surviving veterans, we are at risk of losing any proximity to Canada's efforts in the Great War as we now commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Vimy Ridge. However, when Canadian students have the chance to stand at the foot of the Vimy Ridge Memorial and see the names of the 3,598 fallen Canadian soldiers, I know they will be truly immersed in our collective history and the magnitude of wartime tragedy will be impressed upon, upon them. The bravery, determination and pride that achieved an unprecedented victory at Vimy Ridge 100 years ago will be more real for them. While only 4,000 Canadian students could attend these events, I know that the students will carry on the duty of remembrance to their peers and share their unforgettable experience. I would like to thank all the volunteers who organized various fundraisers, as well as the chaperones and the teachers who made this trip possible for the students of Perry Sound High School and Muskoka's St. Dominic's Catholic High School in Bracebridge. Thank you very much. I'll say a little Thank you. Further member of statements, the member from Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to talk about an issue that is deeply affecting my riding, and that's the need for a dementia strategy that the province has promised. In the Niagara, 9,460 people have been identified as living with dementia. In Ontario, over 200,000 people. I wrote to the Minister of Finance about this issue of funding, but this issue is very important. I wanted to raise it in this House. Without proper funding for dementia services and frontline care, a strategy means nothing. It's heartbreaking when you go to a care facility and you see people who need these services and they are alone and they can't get them. I know the retired teachers of Ontario Branch 14 in Niagara also wrote to the minister about this. I'm happy to support their efforts. The government of Ontario can play a positive role in the lives of those suffering from dementia, but we can also play a role in helping the families. So often when a loved one suffers from dementia, it's a family who becomes their caregiver, and this can be very stressful. Whether it's families caring for one loved ones or persons suffering from dementia, this government needs to do more. I am hoping my colleagues across the floor and beside me forget about party lines and join me in fight against dementia in Niagara and Ontario. Mr. Speaker, we need to make sure that the dementia strategy in Ontario has the power and the funding necessary to be successful. I hope the House will act quickly on this issue and make this a priority. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Remember, students, member from Davenport. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. The province of Ontario and my riding of Davenport are proud to have a dynamic and wide-reaching organization like Abrigo that does such important work, providing countless services to the people in our community who often need them most. Each year, Abrigo services over 6,400 individual clients. Of those, 792 are women who identify as experiencing some form of domestic abuse. Abrigo started over a quarter century ago to help women facing this issue, and it continues to be a key piece of the important work they do. Abrigo also works with women and men to build their parenting skills, provide seniors with the light of beam of peer support, allowing them to escape the darkness of isolation, and finally educate and raise awareness on gender issues with a diverse youth demographic. So you see, it's organizations like this that form the backbone of the diverse and prosperous community across the province, and that's why I'm so proud of the $136,000 grant the Ontario government recently awarded to Abrigo for the purchase and installation of a much-needed elevator to greatly increase accessibility to programs and seniors uh, services offered to seniors by Abrigo. And I welcome the seniors from Abrigo that will be joining me here this afternoon at Queen's Park. Bienvenidos. Thank you. Thank you. Further members, the member from Bruce Gray Owen South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, there are only a few members here who will recall that on December 19, 1991, this legislature approved a resolution from the former member from Bruce Gray Owen Sound, Bill Murdoch, that proclaimed the sixth day of April as Tartan Day in Ontario. They may also remember that the first Tartan Day anniversary was quite a celebration at Queen's Park, marked by the Lieutenant Governor being piped into this chamber by several pipe bands from around Ontario. 
The fiery Scots never do anything halfway, Speaker, and my colleague and former MPP from Bruce Gray Owen Sound proved that, for he never forgot to wear his kilt in honour of April 6. In fact, I know he didn't forget his kilt today, which is really the Scottish battle garb, because I talked to him this morning and he assured me he was proudly clad and roaring to go to cheer for the local Owen Sound attack hockey team. Albeit, he says, he really wanted to put on the Edmonton Oilers sweater, but didn't have it. And the member from Ottawa, West Nepean, will know all about that. <laughs> Speaker, the 6th day of April is of historical significance to our proud Scottish community because it marks the anniversary of the Declaration of Scottish Independence in 1320. It also marks their contribution to the best, pro best our province has to offer. They're right up there with the English, Irish, French, and our First Nations, who in our very early years of our nation's development helped build and share into a place that we're proud to call home today. My colleague, Jim McDonnell, the member from Stormont Dundas, South Glengarry, is one of the proudest Scots I have ever met. He and many of my constituents are honoured to celebrate all things Scottish. Gray County, along with the surrounding counties of Bruce, Wellington and Dufferin, was settled by these industrious people, including Agnes McPhail, who was born near Chatsworth. I want to thank all of my colleagues in the House for remembering to wear plaid today in celebration of Tartan Day and for your efforts in keeping Ontario Scottish bands, pipers, dancers and clans and all of its heritage alive. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you for the member's statements. Further members' statements, the member from Mississauga Streetsville. Speaker, Canadian children have learned for generations about the contribution and sacrifice of the Canadian Corps in World War I. A century ago, after the Germans had repulsed two French and one British assault on Vimy Ridge, a strategic hill overlooking the Douai Plain near Arras, the Canadian Corps won the first major Allied victory of the war. That victory established the Canadian Corps' reputation as the elite ground force of World War I. Vimy Ridge was given in perpetuity to Canada by France. Canadian guides offer a special welcome to visitors from the land that 3,598 men of the Canadian Corps left behind forever. The respectful silence at Vimy evokes the remembrance of those who, like me, have visited the immaculately tended Commonwealth War Graves site at Vimy Ridge. A visitor is drawn to thoughts not so much of battle, but of home. It is as though the collective presence of the spirits of the Canadians who stayed at Vimy longed to share thoughts of Canada that their contribution helped build. Learning this part of history is important to every Canadian. So is finding the few hours during a lifetime to walk Vimy Ridge and to know what the Royal Canadian Legion means when they say we will remember them. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Niagara West Glamour. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to express the indignation of Fenwick residents in my riding who are offended that Farm Memorial Public School has been renamed to Wellington Heights Public School to honour. Arthur Wellesley, the first Duke of Wellington. This same Duke was a documented racist who stated in the British House of Lords on August 1, 1833, that we do not wish Jews to come and settle here, end quote. He was also an integral part of the colonial British government that reneged on treaties with Indigenous people. Concerned residents of Fenwick acknowledge that the Duke of Wellington may have contributed to some worthy and un unrelated causes, but it is inappropriate to per perpetuate past attitudes that we recognize as oppressive, disrespectful, and offensive today. More than 200 parents and students gathered this past February to voice their desire to not have Fenwick's community associated with such disgraceful sentiments. I appreciate their concern and I share their view, Mr. Speaker. When the Minister of Education responded to the 2016 release of the Journey Together, Ontario's commitment to reconciliation to Indigenous people, she urged the chair of the District School Board of Niagara to address anything that could be offensive. I've had many parents and students who are concerned with, concerned with this name choice contact me, and I urge the government to follow up on its own words by asking the District School Board of Niagara to reconsider the use of the name Wellington Heights and either use the second choice name or restart the naming process in accordance with the board's naming policy. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's therefore now time for reports by committees.